So, I want to begin by thanking Mayor Luttrell for this inspiring proclamation and for what I understand has been his really steadfast support over the years. I truly believe that decades of fearless work, much of it conducted by the folks in this space tonight, are what has enabled Memphis to reach a new day. It really is a new day, and it is a new day <laughs> for two important factors. And before I go on, I have to say, I'm truly speaking from the heart, but I have to have notes because I don't want to go off script, and none of you want me to go off script, you can believe that. So I really am speaking from the heart. And the, the first important factor is the progress that's being made to increase public understanding of the deep and long-lasting impact that adverse childhood experiences can have across the life course. And also, the second is the pioneering work that's being conducted to break what for many has been an intergenerational cycle of trauma. It truly is a new day, and it truly is the day of the joyful child. And I am joyful to be here in Memphis to contribute to these efforts. And we can see progress happening here in Memphis, but you know, there's a, a uh, disturbing chronicle of America being written today, and we have to do our part to ensure that that chronicle stops and that it doesn't include Memphis. So, as Stephen Bush, the foundation, Orchard mentioned, I arrived here by way of a long career that involved roles as a public policy researcher, and he did go on a little too long, and a university professor, and a program officer, and a program developer and director. Uh, but like all of you, uh, my path to adulthood, as well as the journey to figure out what I want to be when I grow up, was really influenced by my childhood and the experiences throughout childhood. Some of them good and some of them not so good. And I don't know if you can see this so well, but it's a can that I've carried with me from job to job and from city to city for many, many, many years. And I'll use that in, instead of telling you how old I am. And it's, and it's a can of powdered eggs. And this is the reason that I despise eggs. I can't stand the taste, the smell, the texture. There's nothing about them. And if anyone out here has had the unfortunate misfortune of having to eat powdered eggs, I'm sure that you'll understand my loathing. But everywhere I've been, I'm terrible. And it's because it reminds me of who I am. My mother would go every month to the distribution center at the local school, and she'd come back with a box. It contained uh, powdered, uh, powdered eggs, of course, but it contained beans and uh, butter and luncheon loaf, and that's another one you don't want to know about. But think Spam and these, these eggs. And she was doing the best she could with what she had, and she had help along the way. And so this, this can of eggs reminds me of the responsibility I feel to, feel, feel to children who lay down to sleep tonight but are burdened by overwhelming fear and anxiety. Some of them are living in homes where domestic violence is a frequent occurrence. Some of them don't have a home at all. Some of them are being physically, emotionally, or sexually abused or living in a home with adults who's addicted to drugs. Some of them are struggling to deal with the absence of an incarcerated parent, and still others have suddenly found themselves alone in a strange country, and they don't know where their mother is, where their father is, or what's going to happen. And now that responsibility and that feeling of responsibility has led me here to Memphis where truly groundbreaking efforts are being conducted to work the clay while it's still wet. So maybe, okay. Okay, so man, so I mean, evidently some of you know that saying, work the clay. 
play while it's still wet. It's an African proverb, and, and more correctly, Tanzanian. And I think it, it speaks to what's happening here in the city. And I'm a lover of proverbs, and I'm gonna have to excuse me because I'm gonna uh, give you a couple more before it's done. But uh, the, the ability of proverbs to, to, to tell the truth with power, with poetry, uh, with the universality of meaning. That's what Proverbs do. And I think that many of you are working the play while it's still wet here in Memphis because you're working to promote the social emotional development of children. But that requires stable, strong, and nurturing relationships and environments. And that requires addressing the kinds of inequities, both social and economic, that limit the capacity of families and communities, both to prevent toxic stress and to heal when it affects them. Clearly, we have a lot more work to do. And I'm trying to immerse myself in the work of the AIDS Awareness Foundation during the time I've been here. And I've been impressed and energized by everything I've seen, both in the upsides and a range of other activities that are taking place to address ACEs. And so, uh, in closing, I want to tell you what my biggest hope is. I'd like to share it and hope you can help make it happen. And it's that everyone, everyone continues to make efforts to address ACEs. And when I say everyone, I really do mean everyone as parents as educators, as caregivers, as advocates, as clergy, as researchers, as coaches, as health and mental health care providers, as business owners, as policy makers, as law enforcement, as judges, as philanthropists, and okay, in case I've forgotten anyone, as human beings, we all have a role to play in addressing ACEs. Because a child is a child of everyone, Sudanese proverb. Okay, so please let me share one more, more, more proverb with you, uh, and that's from China, and it too is relevant to our work. A child's life is like a piece of paper on which every person leaves a mark. The marks produced by adverse childhood experience are often so deep that it's extremely hard to smooth them away. They're frequently so harshly made that the paper gets torn in places. And the marks can be so heavily and repeatedly drawn that they aren't easily erased. But there's hope. And we know it because we've seen what has happened when paper has been reclaimed and reborn in a range of effective ways. And because toxic stress can affect anyone, anywhere. It's not just about this group or that group. It's about all of us. And that means the messages used to convey that message and the strategies used to address the problem really must be those that connect us, not divide us. And so I'll end with these words of truth, not another proverb, but I want to end with these words of truth from theologian Henry Nowen. Nobody escapes being wounded. We are all wounded people, whether physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. The main question is not how can we hide our wounds so we don't have to be embarrassed but how can we put our woundedness in the service of others? When our wounds cease to be a source of shame and become a source of healing, we have become wounded warriors. And I hope that's what all of you will become. Thank you.